Okay, so can you guys see that okay? Is it big enough? Yes. Okay, good. So it's another little project. I did a microcontroller project. This was uh, back, Eric, when do we do this? Uh, this group, geez, man, that was like, I don't know. I'm gonna say 2015, maybe? Uh, no, 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 before that, 2014. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was around that time. So that's this when Eric and I, we were coaching um, FLL Robotics. And so we, we both kind of had a vested interest in this because Eric had his two kids. There's one of his sons. There's his son, there's my kid. Um, so we had, we wanted to get our kids involved in uh, robotics, uh, FLL robotics. So um, we coached a couple of teams and uh, I, I think Eric kept on coaching I, and I started judging and stuff. But uh, so anyway, this year, the theme, um, the first Lego League project, it, it comes with a theme. Every year it had a theme and uh, you had to do like a science fair project and then you had to do a, a robotics, um, you build a ro robot and you put it in, uh, on the table and you compete. And uh, for this year, it was emergency preparedness. So the kids, uh, here's the team here, they decided to use amateur radio as a theme. And so they looked at all different kinds of stuff and they decided on a balloon as a repeater. And I think it actually came out to park. And they actually presented this to Park at one of the uh, one of the meetings. I don't know if you guys remember this or not. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah. So we these are the kids, and all these kids are now grown. Isaac here, he's in engineering first year. Kyle here's in actuarial science. I think he's in first year, right? Right, Eric. Uh, yeah, just started first year co-op. Yeah, September. Mike, Michael, whereabouts? I don't know. I don't know what happened to Michael. Uh, do you know, Eric, what happened to Michael? Did yeah, no, I have actually, I, I've, I've lost touch with uh, Darlene, his mom, uh, and, you know, so no, I don't. But uh, next time I bump into her, I'll ask. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting because, you know, there there's a theme here, which you're yeah. getting to, I'm sure. Absolutely. So Tyler, you know, he got his, uh, as a result of this, he got his ticket. He's VA3 TJR, and uh, he's now studying TV broad broadcasting. And Tatum, I believe she's in second year physics. Max, I don't know about this kid. He's <laughs> anyway. He's uh, I think he's in final year biochem, right? Uh, third year of his co-op. Third, okay, third. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought he was uh, near close, but uh, he's a he's a crazy kid. He's a lot of fun. So, so what um, um, what they needed to do was uh, develop a um, repeater. So. I thought about it, and that's where I came across this chip, and I talked about this chip previously, this ISD1760, which is a voice recorder chip, and I figured, okay, well, maybe I could do something with that as a, as a simple FRS radio re repeater. So uh, basically, it's a simplex repeater. Uh, so basically, what, what it does, it... Um, it's got a Vox, it listens for a transmit, you know, and in, and in FM, it's fairly uh, easy to detect a, a carrier, detect, a, you know, um, when there's a uh, transmission. And then once it gets a Vox, it records the message. Once the uh, signal disappears, it then uh, plays back the message. And so the um, ISD1760 chip, it's meant to have a bunch of push buttons uh, on it. So you could either use SBI or uh, push buttons. What I did, I did the easy thing. I just connected the IO pins from the microcontroller directly to the push button pins. And I didn't even bother using SBI. I just tried, tried to keep it simple. So here's a schematic of what, um, what was done. I'll zoom in, it's a little bit blurry, but uh, here's the interface to the radio. So this line coming in here, this is the actual audio line coming in. And right here is the push to talk. And so basically all it's doing, it's got a rectifier 
capacitor and uh, a transistor which grounds this five volt signal. And so when this signal gets grounded, you know that um, it's, uh, it's active. And uh, this pin here is actual push to talk to the radio. So when this signal from the microcontroller is present, it grounds this and uh, then you have push to talk. So this, this, uh, this audio line also goes in to the mic uh, pin of the chip and uh, the playback is here. This is the playback. It's coming to the audio output of the chip. You can see nothing special there doing done. The, the rest of these stuff is just LED lights and stuff to make it, uh, you know, work just decoupling there. And uh, there's some required things you need to have around the chip to make it work. And the rest of these pins are just for, you know, uh, LED lights and um, uh, uh, bypassing and resets and stuff like, like that. And with all my projects, I always have a, a TTY interface. So here's what it looked like when it was completed. The board, this is an old board. I just took a picture of it a couple months ago, and you can see it's all uh, being uh, oxidized. The copper is being oxidized. But that's the board. It's a PIC, a microchip, you know, controller um, I used. Uh, there's the ISD1760. Here's the Vox. Here, this is the power supply coming in, and it's pretty straightforward. Nothing, uh, nothing overly complex about it. There's the radio. Uh, that's actually a, a Baofeng, which can transmit on uh, FRS. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Um, and uh, here's the board I used to connect to it. And uh, before, once I had it connected, I had a world of hurt. With, with this thing, because RFI, it would, uh, once it uh, keyed up the radio, it wouldn't unkey. It just wouldn't unkey. I had to actually go and physically disconnect it from the radio and power this off. But by putting just a choke there, that uh, eliminated the problem and uh, it worked uh, flawlessly. From a code perspective, it's, it's very simple. You know, all you do, you look for Vox, you look for the carrier detect signal. If uh, C CD is zero, it's on. Remember, it was grounding that five volt pin. So basically it checks if it's, um, the, the Vox is present, uh, send the, uh, it, it debounces it, first of all, to make sure it's clear. And uh, then it sets the receiving flag and, uh, once the receiving flag is set, it then records the audio. So it, it sets the various pins on the, um, there's the, uh, that's for output. Yeah, voter function. So I've got this voter function routine that, uh, you know, it, it can uh, record or erase or, you know, whatever. Um, here it is record start. And then if it's in transmit, so it's now going to push uh, push to talk and it's going to stop recording and then it's going to play back the audio. Once playback is finished, it uh, push to talk goes back to, to normal. It delays a second, it erases the uh, recording and then it goes back up and it starts running again. So fairly, very simple code. You know, and here's the... Uh, Here's the vocoder function I did, and it's just a switch with simple like R, S, P, F, E, and so forth. And all it's doing, it's just, if you look, it's just setting, this is defined as a pin. So instead of defining a pin, I just had a, a define called REC, which is the pin. So by setting that pin to zero, it's recording. Setting the pin to one, it's stopped and so forth. So you're just setting pins on the, uh, on the um, chip, the 1750 chip. So the way we, we decided to test this, this worked well in the lab. And uh, there I am setting it up. We, 
this was uh, this was around Christmas, wasn't it, Erica? I think it was January or it was around Christmas, and we went to 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 Calden East. That's the uh, the high school in Calden East, the Robert F. Hall uh, school, and we reached out to a local um, RC club, and they agreed to bring out their helicopter and hoist this up into the air so it would uh, function like a balloon. The other thing too, we had to build this single wire antenna, which was really cool. Remember that, Eric? We had to build that, uh, that antenna, that wire an antenna. That was pretty cool. So we hoisted this up and uh, needless to say, tragedy happened. This is the pilot, that's the guy's helicopter. So he took it up and there it is going up. And what happened, It uh, he got the pendulum effect. It started going back and forth, made the helicopter unstable. And eventually this payload wrapped right around and went into the rotors. And the helicopter came down in a smoking heap. And that smoke, this was the electric helicopter. Does anyone know what that smoke's from? Can anyone guess? The battery. The battery. The battery it's from the lipo battery it got punctured and it burst into flames so that's a lipo accident there and uh, the guy i think he destroyed his uh, helicopter we felt really bad i remember the kids really enjoyed it <laughs> the kids enjoyed it and so that's at the end here's the guy you can see he wasn't very happy you know but uh he toasted his uh his helicopter he was very it was very good of him, to, you know, very nice of him to come out and fly this up for the kids. But uh, he ended up uh, not being happy.